Please come back to me. <laughs> you pleaded, your head laid against his. <laughs> I've lost friends, I've lost my family, I cannot lose you too. Your hands gripped onto his face, clutching onto him as if he would slip through your fingers. It was a downward spiral. You saw it coming, heard it from all of your friends, the sudden change, the 180, the flip. Everyone was changing, and not for the better. Your fingers tangled in his unruly hair, his breath mingled with yours, while your tears threatened to spill. He had been growing distant, quiet, and yet his actions, though small and minute, spoke volumes. His methods, his tactics, and his way of control no longer felt righteous, no longer honourable. All the hard work he laid out for himself, gone in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Please stay with me. <laughs> Stay with me. You felt his hand reach up to yours, clutching onto it just as strong as you did to him. But his eyes stayed vacant, staring ahead. He heard your soft cries, but his mind was elsewhere, entangled by words spoken to him during his academy days. Something changed. He knew for certain, but questioned. Was it for the better? Don't change. Please don't change. You whispered, feeling his hand tighten around yours. I can't promise that. Shinso strolled through the aftermath of broken debris, shattered glass, and a few bloody walls on the block, fixing his black gloves on his hands. Paramedics and police walked past him, unaware of his presence, and yet allowing him to walk through the crime scene without question. His tired eyes watched while police took accounts, and paramedics tended to the wounded. Hey, you! called out a voice from behind. Shinso rolled his eyes before he turned around lazily towards a police officer on approach. What are you doing here? I'm sorry. No one is allowed- uh. With a raise of his hand, the police officer's words choked in her throat, her eyes growing vacant. A long sigh drew from Shinso's breath while he pinched the bridge of his nose the tension growing in his head. <sighs> Go back to work, he ordered, his eyes lowering to the name badge of the police officer. You didn't see me. Inspector. I'm just a normal passerby, and this crime scene is a random drive-by. The officer, while her eyes were vacant, turned around and walked away, leaving Shinso to continue his stroll away from any incrimination. That headache returned again. His brows furrowed from a dull throb of holding multiple minds to a few menial tasks. Cleaning up after other people's messes was becoming more a chore than a job. Years following every gang war, every Yakuza hit, and every quarter with the infamous Big Three was 24-7. The usual familiar tone of his phone signaled a successful transfer of funds, courtesy of Todoroki, of course. For whichever job Shinzo had to clean up, he was paid in full for his services. Shinzo still wondered how Todoroki could keep tabs on his work, eyeing for any familiar faces, but finding none. He never questioned how Todoroki worked. To him, it was best not to. 
Shinzo! Yelled a familiar voice, causing Shinzo to slow his step. What is it, Kaminari? Droned Shinzo's voice, turning his head lazily towards a loud blonde. You're lucky I just finished, or else I would- I know, I know. I'm sorry. Apologized Kaminari, his hands up in defeat. But I think I've got something that'll cheer you up. Shinzo's eyes stared at Kaminari, both in frustration and exhaustion. After all, he had been working all night cleaning up Kirishima's mess, and that was enough of a headache during this quarter of the year. Kaminari stepped aside, revealing you, dressed in something wildly inappropriate. Shinso's tired eyes widened at the sight. The fact that you stood before him after all of these years took him back. However, your posture, your vacant behavior, and your quiet demeanor was out of character. Your eyes were downcast and your expression was vacant while someone else held onto your shoulders, keeping you on your feet. Shinso recognized Kaminari's nightclub singer, his best artiste, according to Kaminari, while they ensured your well-being. It would explain the clothes you wore, if you had come straight from Kaminari's red light district. See? Told you I'd cheer you up, continued Kaminari with a lopsided grin. Where'd you find them? Questioned Shinso skeptically. I didn't, bluntly replied Kaminari. I usually take what Bakugo doesn't want. He calls them scraps, I call them sparks. But Sugar here recognized them, and I thought I should pay you a visit. I think you'd appreciate their company more than my club would. Bakugo had them, continued Shinso, the spite in his voice evident while he strode towards Kaminari with a heavy and angry step. Yeah, well, somehow, Kaminari nonchalantly responded. Shinso approached you raising his gloved hands to cup your cheek and look you in the eyes. Whatever life was left had disappeared, seeing nothing but a vacant expression, as if he had brainwashed you earlier. Hitoshi Shinso was a man of many talents. A specialist, specifically crime scene cleanups for all of his friends. Well, in Shinso's perspective, his friends were more like clients. There was the occasional job outside of cleanup, whether anyone needed any persuasive techniques on their side, most specifically Todoroki or Sero. But otherwise, he was paid handsomely for covering up the mess laid to waste every quarter. To Shinso, he hated this time of year. Four times a year. The work was hefty depending on the severity of the damage laid to waste in the city and the number of close calls he had with law enforcement, having to be called in every once in a while if something were to slip past his radar, was a thorn in his side. He had some form of immunity thanks to Todoroki or even Monoma on a few occasions, but he knew he was the easiest target, the best scapegoat, and his work was more so for him than for the others. He was crucial, indispensable. His hands clutched onto your cheek, his palms shaking from the rage that coursed through his body on what had been done to you, trapped in Bakugo's territory. Hope you like the gift, continued Kaminari, receiving a dark stare from Shinso. I'm just passing them along. I don't need them at my club, nor are they deserving to be left on the street. I mean, if Bakugo doesn't want them back- Shut up. Coolly interrupted Shinso. Okay, jeez. I thought you'd be thrilled. Anyway, time for a siesta. As Sarah would put it, come along, sugar. 
with his command. Shinzo watched Kaminari's idol follow after him, seeing his arms wrap around their waist. His tired eyes returned back to yours, finding your pupils still moving and responding. Hey. He slowly spoke. You okay? You raised your head slowly to his voice, finally looking into his eyes before your hand reached up to his cheek, gently touching his skin. Stay, you whispered. Shinzo's eyes widened while he still held you, memories of the past rushing back into his mind, plaguing his thoughts. Come on, he coaxed, reaching down to your hand to hold and take you away from the crime scene not too far away. As soon as he started to pull you, he was held back, unable to move your body. You weren't strong by any means, he knew this, but you refused to move. You only stood there, quiet, unmoving, despondent. With a deep sigh, frustrated through his headache, Shinso picked you up in his arms and carried you down the street. If not for the inappropriate garb you wore, the public would have seen the scene as him taking a floozy off the street. For most of the trip, he ignored the stairs. Upon reaching his modest apartment, Shinso walked you inside. It was a comfortable space, nothing out of place and everything orderly. He watched you drag your feet before you stepped onto the rug, stopping in your tracks. As if it was a foreign concept, you knelt towards the rug and ran your fingers gently over its fibres, mesmerised by the feel of it against your skin. Watching your reaction to such a simple thing only justified the amount of torture you must have gone through, the mental toll it took away from you, and it pained Shinso, if only a moment. Bathrooms to the left. That way, he instructed, catching your attention. I don't have a second room, but I can sleep on the couch. <coughs> the quiet mule of Toka interrupted Shinso and caught your ear, your eyes spotting the black feline on the couch. You stared at the little creature before you crawled across the open lounge, slowly approaching her filled with curiosity. A moment passed while you stared into her eyes, slowly and warily raising a hand towards her before her head immediately nudged into it, rubbing into it. Shinso witnessed a smile while you scratched behind Toka's ears, the same spot you always scratched her long ago. Do you remember her? Shinso asked. He didn't receive a reply. Only watched the spectacle when you crawled onto the couch and laid there, allowing Toka to do as she pleased. The vibrations of his phone took him away from memory lane, picking it up to hear another familiar voice over the line. Hello. Shinso, old friend. Greeted Monoma over the earpiece. Been up to any trouble lately? By trouble, you mean... Caught by any of my friends in the precinct? Not that I know of. I've been dealing with Kirishima's mess last night. Why? Tensions are high now that Midoriya actually pursued his... puppet. And well, the police as one ticket to Ground Zero decided to go solo to get the job done. Clarified Monoma. Have you been in any contact following Bakugo's culling? A silence fell over the phone call, while Shinso still eyed you on the couch, playing with Toka. What if I said no? Replied Shinso. Then I'd say you're either a liar or someone else that looked like you took someone from the red light district. They have footage of you with Kaminari, who had been infamous for taking people off of Bakuko's hands. 
and I can clearly see you showing some hospitality. Shinso's eyes darted towards the windows of his apartment, scanning the rooftops of his surroundings with very little success spotting anybody within viewable distance. Don't bother, I can see you clearly as day. Continued Monoma. A sigh escaped Shinso's throat, pouting at the thought that crossed his mind. <sighs> you borrowed that quirk, didn't you? He asked with a slight sarcastic tone. Paid for in full, he heard over the line. But I suggest you either hide them or run. You've got visitors. Immediately, Shinso turned towards you and quickly grabbed your wrist, pulling you up from the couch and into his bedroom. A studio apartment was an ideal choice, but seeing how open it was made it difficult to find hiding spots. Opening a closet by his bed, he pushed you inside, only realizing that you held onto its cat this entire time. Stay, he ordered, momentarily realizing the word he spoke. He watched your eyes open slightly while you gently held Toka in your arms. Stay, you softly replied with a nod. Without another word, Shinso shut the closet door before a rapping at his front door caught his ear. Still in his clothes from the night before, he pulled his suit blazer from his shoulders and removed his gloves throwing them across the couch while he reached for the front door. He swiftly pulled onto the long scarf that hung on a coat rack close by, wrapping it haphazardly around his shoulders while the incessant knocking continued. He opened his apartment door, revealing three police officers standing intimidatingly before him. May I help you? Shinso asked his voice tired. There was an uncomfortable silence around the police officers, their eyes glancing between each other, anticipating answering Shinso's greeting. He watched their fidgeting and nervousness. He was no stranger to everyone's aversion to conversation, until one of them stepped forward. Hitoshi Shinso, we have a few questions for you. If you don't mind. What about? Just wanted to confirm your whereabouts between 11.25pm last night to 6.55am this morning. Continued the officer, his hands on his utility belt where his pistol sat. May we come in? Shinso eyed all three police officers. Nobody's, he thought. At least no one he knew personally from law enforcement. Wary about their presence, he slowly walked out of their way and allowed them entry, all three walking in, while one swung their shoulder into his. Deliberate intention, but one that Shinso swallowed his pride. Shutting his door, Shinso turned to find all three officers wandering his studio apartment. His eyes momentarily glanced towards his bedroom, specifically his closet, hoping that you would keep silent. Whatever you need to know, I'm an open book, reassured Shinso, turning his attention back to the one officer in his company. Very good. We won't take too much of your time. Tell us, where were you at 12.30am this morning? Hmm... I wasn't at home, replied Shinso nonchalantly. Couldn't sleep. Took a walk around the block. Around the block? In downtown Musatafu? Hmm. The next block over. Sure. Shinso's eyes still watched the other two officers around his apartment, spotting one of them heading towards his bedroom his concern more so on their pistols by their belts. Again, he was no stranger to visits by police, but the firearms had always been discomforting. 
So you hadn't been around during the drive-bys this morning? Not aware of the racket being made? Continued the officer with a suspicious eye. I keep to myself, responded Shinso. Not my problem. At least his misinformation had taken effect. Believing Kirishima's gang activity to be drive-bys seemed too obvious, but with the time crunch he had, it was Shinso's quickest solution. So, where were you at 5.15am this morning? Still out. On your walk? I visited a few friends. Including one Denki Kaminari? Shinso swallowed. Monoma's words returned in his mind. Lying would land him in an interrogation cell and a search of his apartment. Bending the truth can only keep him safe for a while. However, knowing that you were in his custody, indirectly, made the situation more difficult than he would like. You heard footsteps creep into the open bedroom, the heavy footfalls of one of the police officers creaking against the hardwood floor. If not for the deep purrs of Toka calming you, your ears were glued to the sounds outside of the dark closet. The light streamed through the bottom of the closet doors, watching as shadows approached you. Outside, the officer eyed the closet, glancing every now and then towards Shinso still being questioned. Piquing his interest, he approached the closet doors, grabbing for the handle and turning it to swing the doors open violently. A blur of black rushed past the officer's feet, catching everyone's attention towards the bedroom. Toka trotted out, turning towards the officer and looking up at him with crystal blue eyes. He looked down at the cat with a sneer. His back to you. Damn cat. He murmured with a sneer, raising his foot towards Toka. Until a jerk of his shirt pulled him away, throwing his balance off. You stepped away from the officer, releasing him from your hands, before you turned around, finding you still disheveled, outside of the closet. I found them! cried the officer, catching both officers' attention as well as Shinso's. In a matter of seconds, the officers clambered towards Shinso. With a whip of his scarf, he successfully wrapped one officer's hands, binding him and gagging him. But the other drew her gun, aiming it at his head. On your knees, now! She yelled, anticipating Shinso's next move. Still holding one officer in his grip, Shinso stood still, his eyes drawn towards the third officer in front of you. Come on, you, ordered the officer, his large hand opened to grab your wrist. The sight of his hand descending upon you brought back images in your mind. The screams, the pain, the few moments of clarity you were able to grasp on while you went through mental torture. There were blurry moments. The people that visited your cell every once in a while appeared. The blonde hair and the sound of his snarl. The red hair and that toothy grin. The blonde with that cackle. Familiar faces. Until you saw... Shinso. Back in his apartment. Back when he changed. When you tried to speak to him. To bring him back. We're getting you out of here. Continued the officer, grabbing hold of your wrist and dragging you towards the open studio apartment. Shinso watched you being pulled against your will, your body resisting against the officer before the hiss of Toka took his attention away. Witnessing a sneer from the officer lifting his leg above her, you watched as his foot descended towards Toka before you pulled against his hold jerking him back from the cat and drawing his attention back onto you. His sneer pulled on his face towards you in frustration, before you stared into his eyes, 
immediately connecting your mind with his. His body stopped, his eyes turning glassy, unable to look away from you. The second officer, confused and fearful of the situation, still held Shinso at gunpoint, the firearm clicking in her hand. Shinso sighed under his breath, still with the third officer bound by his scarf. Hitoshi Shinso, you are under arrest for abetting human trafficking and perjury. Hands on your head. Now! <laughs> Shinzo's eyes widened at the sight of the officer's body twirling from the gunshot, her body crashing to the floor. His eyes trailed back onto you, still staring at the officer, whose gun was now raised, aimed at where the other officer once stood. What did you do? asked Shinso, while you still held onto the officer's mind. With his gun still in hand, the officer turned to aim it towards his head, his eyes still glued on yours. I've lost friends. You slowly spoke, while the officer clicked his gun on the ready. I've lost family. You then broke your stare to turn towards Shinso, looking into his exhausted eyes. Smiling meekly, the first time he has seen you smile. I cannot lose you too. The officer's eyes began to water, tears streaming from them before his trigger finger slowly pulled. Stop. Called Shinso, halting the actions of the officer who whimpered under his breath. Your smile disappeared upon Shinso's request your body turning limp, and releasing the officer from your control. <laughs> His whimpers turned into cries, while he ran towards one of Shinzo's windows, prying it open and jumping out without thought. His insane wails could be heard upon his descent, before silence returned. Shinzo grumbled at the mess, not only was there one body in his apartment, but another out of his window. Five stories wasn't going to be an easy clean-up. He turned to the officer he had bound and gagged, his eyes panicked at the sight of his two officers dead. It was one thing for Shinso to clean up after other people's mess, but never had he had to clean up after his own. He turned to you, still standing with an empty look in your eye. He easily released you from his control, allowing you to return back to what little faculties you had. Thank you. He spoke, watching your eyes turn to him. For saving Toka. That smile of yours returned. It was gentle, despite the intent you placed on the officer earlier. Could you help me with one thing, pet? You nodded in reply. Can you ask this gentleman to speak? The officer's eyes widened while you approached him, looking into his eyes curiously and entering into his mind. You saw him scared, something you were familiar with. Shinso then slowly released the gag from the officer, allowing him to breathe. No. I need you to do something for me. Asked Shinso, watching the officer fight against speaking while you still kept a hold of his mind in yours. <laughs> yes. The officer reluctantly spoke, his eyes turning immediately glassy in front of Shinso. That's better. He replied, You're going to pass on a message. The rest of the morning was eventful until the cleaners had left his apartment. 
It was the same group of people he had amiable control over to do some menial cleanups, mostly Kaminaris. Now in a quiet space, Shinso sat exhausted on the couch while you laid your head on his lap, your eyes tired but unable to sleep. He gazed down at you, his fingers running through your hair remembering the feeling of you years ago. Are you okay? He asked while you looked up towards him, your fingers tracing his chin and his lips. Come back. You whispered, your words paining Shinso further. He grabbed a hold of your hand leaning down to kiss you upon the forehead, feeling the familiar heat of your skin on his lips. Something about this meeting, the serendipity of it all, felt comforting, and yet it felt too staged, as if it was all orchestrated somehow. Shinso figured in the back of his mind that he had some digging and chasing to do. However, while you laid there in front of him, Covered in his suit blazer, Shinso took the opportunity to ease your mind, watching your eyes fight against its fluttering. Don't worry, I'm here now. Just relax, pet. <laughs>